What's up, everybody? Eric here with driverlineup.com, world's located okay, steering wheel holder, checking in with you as your host. Beardless, it is March now. So back to the uh, beardless face. <laughs> Jenna says I look normal now. I, I feel like I, w I look weird. I didn't have a beard for too long, but it was long enough to where it looks weird, you know, when you first shave after a long time. <laughs> anyway, long time subscribers know my face as it is as my normal face but if you subscribed over the last month or two you're gonna be like what the hell's going on with this dude <laughs> um anyway so the i had a couple thoughts first i want to i want to start off with the last video i did about load choice um I asked after so the driver advisory board meeting, you know, there's some that we they we can talk about and there's some we can't talk about. Um, but I asked about I asked one of the someone in management about uh, talking about load choice. And it was unequivocally without question confirmed that load choice is not going anywhere and is being still analyzed and tested and uh, held for potential future business opportunities. What that means, I have no idea. Um, so it's, it's, it's hard getting a straight answer, um, but it is not going anywhere. Uh, I think it was 7% of the fleet is on load choice. Um, there are no plans on expanding that and no plans on shrinking that. Um, and it's still still being looked at, still being studied, still being figured out, um, still a part of the plan. So I wanted to get that out there because, um, you know, it's just, it's such an insignificant thing at the 30,000 foot view, you know, and it was debated pretty heavily during the driver advisory board meeting uh, there was a lot of dirty laundry aired about it. <laughs> so, and you know, here's what I'll say about the drivers on the DAB. So the DAB, the driver advisory board, every DAB member is now on load choice. And I'll tell all of you, you should, you should feel well represented by the driver advisory board because every single member of that board who is on load choice was your advocate um, in saying that if there's not future clarification or, you know, all the things all of you guys are concerned about, uh, you, everybody on the board who's on load choice kind of had this attitude of, hey, if there's not going to be clarification or plan on it, you know, let's scrap it. So it wasn't like, you know, it wasn't like they're trying to protect it for themselves. You know, none of us are trying to protect it for ourselves. So anyway, we could go on for hours about load choice. Um, go watch the video before this one to get my thoughts on it. Uh, the second thing I want to say before I get into the 65 mile per hour, the governor's on our trucks. Uh, the second thing I want to say is that um, the driver advisory board really uh, reinforced my appreciation and respect and loyalty for Prime as a company. Um, I'm just telling you guys, like, I've never, you know, I'm 42 years old. I've been a consultant for some very big companies. I've worked for some very big companies in my life. Um, and I've never seen so much authentic passion in upper management. And I'm talking about upper, like, you know, the top 10, top 15, uh, the top of every department at Prime. I've never seen that much authentic passion, not just passion that's there because of a paycheck. And I'm sure they're all paid very well, as they should be. Um, but, like... And I'm not just, nobody asked me to make this video, you guys. Nobody asked me to say anything. I was quiet during the whole dab. I was just listening, downloading data, uh, taking in information. Uh, I'm not an extremely social person. I'm actually 
quite introverted, believe it or not. Um, I don't need social interaction. I need Jenna, my soon-to-be son, and my dogs. That's all I need. But I like information. I like data. I like to. So I, I just, I was a sponge, you know. And just observing the room and observing, as observing each of these department heads, and it was everything like success leasing, um, tractor shop you know, the, the property management, Pittston, you know, all the terminals, um, sales, all of it, every department head was there and gave us a presentation. And you could see unequivocally without question that every single one of them, every one of them, you guys actually truly gives a shit about the company trying to make the company better and about us drivers and trying to do whatever they can to make things better uh, for us drivers. Which, you know, you could say, well, of course, if they make things great for the drivers, that makes things good for them. Yeah, it does. It makes things good for everybody. Like you have to have the network uh, functioning properly and in a lucrative manner for the drivers in order for the rest of the world, the prime world to work and be lucrative for everybody else. Yeah, I'm not gonna argue that's not the case. That doesn't minimize the true care and passion that these department heads had and have for us drivers. Like I was really, I was really struck by it, you know? And I've seen this before. I've talked about it on YouTube for a long time. Um, I've seen it before, you know, Prime has this culture and uh, they call it a lot of, externally, it's called the Prime Kool-Aid, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> but it just really struck me in a new way in the last couple days where you had, you know, uh, Sam, Sam Messick, which, you know, I was aggravated about the whole pilot flying J thing, <laughs> as were most people. Um, but to use him as a perfect example, I mean, he really, really cares. You know, the guys... The dude, Justin, I think his name is uh, over uh, Road Assist, really does care. Uh, Steve Wutke really does care. Uh, you know, it's not just because they're paid to. I mean, they, they really were there to share from their heart the things that are important to them and the things that they're trying to accomplish. And they were very authentically listening and engaged like no one sat it out when when a driver had a question or concerns that were presented to Prime as a company, nobody just no department just kind of sat there and like, well, I'm not going to comment on that one because that's a tough question. Man, it was very active engagement, um, and so I'm going to talk more about that in the coming days. But I was just really impressed by that. Now, finally, because I'm already well into this video, I want to talk about the uh, governors because I did get two different text messages uh, asking me to bring up the 65 mile per hour governor limit on prime trucks and see if we could get it pushed to 70. <laughs> now, I haven't responded to those two text messages. So if you're seeing it here first, I will respond to your text message. But here's my answer to that. No, I'm not going to bring that question up. And no, it is not going to ever happen. Um, if you think that changing the governor and increasing the speed at which prime trucks uh, can go has not been brought up at a driver advisory meeting before, I don't know what to tell you. Like it is, <laughs> I guarantee you it has been brought up and debated and argued about for years. I gotta sneeze. <laughs> Excuse me. I guarantee you. And it is one of those topics that you just kind of have this understanding in the room that we're just not going to bring it up because it's just going to make faces red and you're going to get shot down and you're going to get told not to ask about it again. And it's not anyone trying to be mean or, or rude. Um, it's just a non-starter. It's not going to happen. Like I would, I would recommend to you to just leave it alone. Um, the the 65 mile per hour govern, governor on lease trucks, company trucks can't do 65, but on <coughs> lease or lease purchase trucks, 
is not going away, guys. And, you know, this is... This is one of those things that you have to really step back or step up into the 30,000 foot view and realize that uh, change in a company of this size is not a simple flip of a switch um, in anything, in, in in literally anything that happens in a company. You know, it's 7,000 tractors. We have like hundreds of students right now waiting for a trainer. Um, just think about the scale and scope of a company that's doing, you know, billions a year in revenue. We spend hundreds of millions of dollars a year on fuel. So something that we might think should be just a yes or no, okay, good, go flip the switch and make that happen is not really, it's not really that black and white. It's not that simple. Um, even if someone thought, okay, we'll let the trucks go from 65 to 70, even if that were the case, and that is not the case, it's not a single day event. You have to understand that this, there's like our, all of our trucks are specced um, for optimal fuel economy at, in the, the governor range that, the, that these trucks run. Um, the, our customers love us because we are safe and we get loads there. And that's tied to the fact that we can't go 80 miles an hour down the road. Guys, a jackknife at 50 miles per hour is going to be substantially different than a jackknife at 75 miles per hour. A blown steer tire is going to be dramatically different at 60 miles per hour than it is at 70 miles per hour. We have a very solid record of getting freight to customers safely and on time. Prime can, and I, Prime haters, you could say, oh, it's not true. There's a lot of, man, it's true. It's true. <laughs> Trust me, it's true. And, you know, increment changes like that, which we may see as not really that significant, do have a significant play on that. Another thing is, I'm guessing, I don't have any evidence of this, but I'm guessing that tens of millions of dollars, if not way more than that, spent on insurance, uh, like I pay for insurance for my trucks, um, those contracts are negotiated because of the governor at 65. So moving it to 70, you're throwing so much out that like you're just reorganizing way more than we as drivers think by just saying, let's make it go from 65 to 70. So the safety department's determined that 65 is the optimal maximum speed. It's, it's been determined our trucks can be spec to get optimal fuel mileage at up to 65. We've negotiated great insurance rates with that governor. Like it's not, it's not going to happen, okay? And truthfully, and I know a lot of you disagree with this, um, but it's not really a big deal. Like, I, to me, it's not a, it's not a big deal. Um, would I like to push a few miles above 65 when trying to get around somebody? Sure. But at the end of the day, 65 is not really that big of a deal. Like I feel safe at 65, would I feel safe at 70? In a lot of instances, yes. But I feel safe at 65. I don't have any problem going 65. It's not that big of a deal. Jumping from 65 to 70 is not, whatever. So no, I'm not gonna ask it a dab because I would immediately get shot down. It's not gonna change. 65 is the govern, governor maximum of prime, and it's what it's going to be. It's not going to change. So, anyway, thought I'd give you guys that update and let you know. I gotta go. More updates coming later today or tomorrow. Check in with you guys soon. Be safe, make good decisions, and as always, drive to thrive. Talk with you next time.